Welcome. There's a result in trigonometry called the law of sines, which says basically the following. Given any triangle with sides lengths little a, little b, and little c, uh, if we label the angles in this triangle, the one opposite little a, let's call that angle big A, one opposite little b, big B, one opposite little c, big C, that if I were to work out the side length a and divide it by the sine of the angle opposite it, sine of big A, this ratio turns out to be the same as side length b divided by sine of the angle opposite it side b, same as the ratio of c divided by sine of big C. And that these three ratios are the same is called the law of sines. Um, it's actually easy to prove this result, I'll do it very quickly. Uh, the trick is to draw in an altitude of the triangle, there's actually three to choose from, and any one of them will actually prove that two of these are equal, so I'll just choose this one for the moment. And I see that it divides my triangle into two right triangles, one on the left and one on the right. So we look at the left-right triangle, sounds a bit weird. According to uh, that picture, sine of big B would be the opposite over the hypotenuse of that, that right triangle. Um, I've called the altitude length h, I see that sine of B is h over little a. That is, it tells me the height of this triangle is actually a times sine of B. Well, by the same token, I can work out the height of this triangle by looking at the right right triangle, and I see that that's telling me that sine of a is actually h over little b. So h is also b times sine of a. Well, these two must be equal, in which case I now see that a sine of b is b, whoops, b sine of a, very scrawly, and that establishes the equality of the first two. And again, if I do the altitude in a different direction, I'll establish that uh, it's b over sine b equals c over sine c, and that's enough to get all three equal. All right, so that's the law of sines. But it's not too well known. This has a wonderful geometric interpretation. And uh, it's out there, but it's, uh, it's not sort of a pointed out in any clear way. Um, you'll find it on Wikipedia, but they don't actually prove it. I'll just, just check there before I move this video. So let me give you a statement of what I'm about to show, and I'll prove it. So let's start again. So here's a triangle, and here's an angle A, here's the little side A. It turns out, and I'll do this in another video shortly, that any triangle can be made to sit inside a circle. Do, 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 do. And I claim that this ratio, a over sine of a, has a wonderful interpretation for this situation. Let me draw the center of the circle. There it is. And a wonderful result about circles is that for any chord in a circle, the angle, the peripheral angle, as I used to call it when I was a kid, is the same from that chord. So all these peripheral angles, I think they're called inscribed angles in America, are all the same. So if I use that result, I'm going to slide this, this apex where angle A is over so that actually one of the sides of the triangles goes through the center of the circle. So was that done? It's kept this as angle A. Oops, a little scrawly. But the nice thing, according to Taylor's theorem, whenever I have a diameter, um, I actually get a 90 degree angle appearing. So if I look at this triangle here with a diameter, angle A, Taylor's theorem that an angle says that an angle from a diameter uh, subtends a 90 degree angle. Well, there we are. If I look at this blue triangle now, I see that sine of big A would be uh, the opposite A over the hypotenuse of this big triangle, which is the diameter of the circle. Rearranging, this tells me the diameter of the circumcircle of the triangle is actually A divided by sine of A. So that's kind of cute that when one writes down the ratios a over sine of a equals b over sine of b equals c over sine of c, it'll be fun to add to this little string of equalities. This equals the diameter of the circumcircle for the triangle. I think it's kind of neat. All right, so another video will prove that circumcircles exist, and, uh, and then that just completes this little story. All right, thank you so much.